if someone had been telling me all this stuff when I started into COPD and started getting ill with COPD, then my journey with COPD would have been a way lot easier. So yeah, let's talk. wonderfully blessed day today hey <laughs> hi guys oh wow i feel really upbeat today i've literally been in bed for the last week or so feeling really Muh. and because i'm feeling a little bit better <laughs> my, my first full day out of bed yesterday from morning through and i'm feeling so much better for it i wanted to talk about something that a lot of people aren't discussing and uh, it's, it's problematic that people aren't discussing it. So I want to make a point of uh, making a video on it. And that is talking about um, COPD and um, urination and uh, incontinence. <laughs> when you get short breath, you might have that kind of urgency to um, feel like you need to get to the bathroom and you know sometimes you don't even make it to the bathroom and incontinence it's just a medical term for um not being able to get to the bathroom in time before you urinate or defecate basically when you get short of breath and the oxygen in your body becomes dangerously low your body then goes into what it calls survival mode and it starts um shutting down organs that it doesn't need in that moment so what it does, it can start conserving oxygen from those uh, organs and puts it into the vital organs that your body needs to survive, i.e. the brain, the heart and the lungs. So like in survival mode, the oxygen is taken away from places like the bladder and the bowel. It's sent over to those vital organs and to the parts of the body that it needs to stay alive, which is why you get that sudden need to urinate or defecate. This is what they call an automatic physical response. I, I can tell you firsthand um, what it feels like. I can remember my first very severe shortness of breath attack. Um, I'd had several at home and I'd sort of come out of them and they were terrifying. But there was one in particular, um, and it was my first huge um, attack of breathing where an ambulance was called. Um, I didn't think I was gonna make it, I must say. I was really struggling to get air. I, I couldn't breathe. I was in a terrible state. Um, I can remember getting to the bathroom because I was desperate for a wee. Obviously, I didn't have any understanding of what or any of that at that point. I uh, didn't know any of the information that I know now. That's right, I was new on oxygen at the time and I was too frightened to turn it up because I didn't know enough about it. Um, thank God when the ambulance guy got there, the first paramedic that got there, he um, turned on the oxygen higher, but at this point I was trying to get to back to the bedroom to sit down and he wanted me to get me back to the bed so he could look at me um, and I wet myself and I just, uh, there's nothing I could do. I just wet myself. Um, I was hugely embarrassed. I can remember absolutely sobbing and he literally held my hand and said, listen, he said, this is so common. He said, it happens to... Um, he said, you see it a lot with people with breathing issues. You see it a lot with, um, he said, when people pass out, um, people go unconscious. He said, and even when people pass away, you know, your body goes into that automatic response of trying to survive. And that's why we have that sudden need to want to go to the toilet. He said, what it is, he said, your body's going into what they call survival mode. So once it was explained to me and he was like, look, it's completely normal. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Luckily, because of the personality that I am, I, you know, I sobbed at first. I ended up having a giggle with them on the day, you know, and I'm sitting in a pile of my own <laughs> pee. With COPD, it's very much, you need to go to the loo. It's not like you normally need to go, where you, you need to go for a week over time, and then by the time you really need to go, you go. It's like, with, the, with COPD, it's very much, you need to go to the loo, and when it comes on, you need to go now. And you have seconds to get there sometimes, you know, and that's sometimes first thing in the morning when you wake up and that breathing's not so good. 
um, but then when you put your oxygen on, if you want oxygen, for instance, or you have your nebulizer, all of a sudden you don't need to go for a wheeze so much. And you're like, why? Why do I not need to go now? It's because you've now made your lungs better and you've made your breathing better and you no longer need to go for that way because then the energy has gone back and spread back into the bladder and everything else. It's amazing, isn't it? I find the body is an amazing thing. You're just talking about going in survival mode when you've had your major shortness of breath um, and your body's been fighting to survive. And then you have your, your regular days where you know we're struggling to breathe on, on a daily basis. And that still affects us needing to go to the loo. sometimes you'll be dying to go to the loo and it comes on it just comes on like that and if you don't get to go when you need to go it sets off your breathing um, um you know for me it comes on very quickly i don't I usually have a um much time to get there um as many a time i haven't got there you know it's part of having copd incontinence is something that happens you you can't control it it's not where you kind of go oh well, i just can't hold it anymore it just happens. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, in medical terms, if you were to see it written down, it would be that incontinence is an involuntary operation of the body. It's usually more in in the uh, severe end of COPD when when you become incontinent, um, or you can become incontinent. It it's hugely embarrassing if it happens to you, especially if it happens in public. Um, even if it happens around family, friends, anything, it's it's hugely embarrassing. Um, it shouldn't be, but it, it can be. And um, because of that embarrassment, sometimes it can often bring up feelings of shame. And because of that, people can then isolate themselves from their friends and family and from going out altogether and end up isolating themselves from the outside world. Um, I've known people that's happened to in public and they've never gone out again. Um, so, and it's because it's not talked about enough that unfortunately there's an ignorance around it. Um, it drives me insane when I, when I, you know, I've seen somebody go through this and you, you, you hear the like, comments and people, oh, I can't tell you. And I know it's not even their fault. It's just an ignorance of not knowing. People are judgmental at times and, you know, people can make comments, but it doesn't always mean that they're making it because they're horrible people. It's just because they don't know um, the information. That's what we should be doing is getting that information out there. Mainly let's get the information out there to the people that need it. You know, the people with COPD, like myself, who were diagnosed and just not given any information. There's also the reasons like you've been coughing for so long that your um, muscles, your core muscles, and your, um, I forget the name of the muscles, but I'll put it there, <laughs> um, become very weak. And so like when you cough, laugh, sneeze, and you can do that right from the beginning parts of, um, right from early stages of COPD, it can happen. I mean, that happens for many other illnesses, not just COPD. With the muscles that become weak, keep your core strong for as long as you can is there's so much out there now and there's so much information out there now and there's so many different types of things that can be used to help people with incontinence now that you don't need to go out there and be embarrassed a lot of the stuff they provide now is undetectable you can't be seen through your clothing it saves you know it can save you from huge amounts of embarrassment um so go on the internet check what's available and what would be best for you you know there are ways to prevent these things from happening and it makes it so that you're prepared you don't need to stay in. Don't um, let it beat you. Um, we're bigger than that. We can do this. You know, as far as like incontinence is, you know, and I'm saying, look, make sure we talk about it. I know some of the things I'm saying, you've already gone, oh, fucking hell. I'm not being funny, right? We can't control incontinence. But let's make it so that incontinence doesn't control us. So, you know, if these things are going to happen for us, Let's be ready. Let's be ready for it. You know, I've had it happen to me a couple of times and I'm going to be ready. I want a life. I don't want to be stuck at home because something's like overpowered me. You know, we're more positive than that. Let's do it. Put your adult panties on. <laughs> Wake them up and let's go. <laughs> Fucking hell. Sorry, excuse my language. Um, 
you know, have, have a sense of humour about it and, you know, stay positive and uh, it's the best way to be. So, yeah, not being funny, guys. I'm losing the light. Lots of peace and love to you. Breathe deep. Stay calm. From me, catching the breath. Um, take care of yourselves and each other. And don't forget, stay positive, guys. You know it makes sense. Bye. Here I am on a high. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> this is <makes> sense. <sighs>